In today's video, I will walk you through a bull call spread uh, and just compare it to how, uh, how the profit and loss chart uh, looks like as opposed to just buying a regular call. So let's just dive into that. So a bull's call spread is also known as a long call spread or a call debit spread. And you may hear me uh, using these uh, terms interchangeably. Um, today we'll be just talking about the bull call spread, but the mechanics that I'm discussing apply exactly to the, the, the bear put spread. Everything is just reversed. So the bull call spread consists of two simultaneous transactions. And uh, if you are a paid member, you must have noticed that when I put out a trade alert, I, <coughs> in my trade alert, I usually mention a call that you need to buy and a call you need to sell. So that's what a bull call spread is. You're, bo you're buying a lower uh, priced call and you're selling a higher, um, higher higher strike call not priced higher strike call so let's, uh, let's see uh, more into details about what that means so here is an example so stock is bkng um, booking holdings uh, previously known as priceline so if i say let's look at this word because the, the bottom where it says short name that's how my uh, my trade alerts are so I refer it, I'll refer it to it as I'm buying a BKNG 1200-1210 call spread. What does that mean? So let's break it down. So what I what that means is I'm buying a 1200 BKNG call and then I'm selling a 1210 BKNG call at the same time. The critical component here is that the whole trade needs to be done uh, together you you can't do a you can't buy a 1200 call and then later on sell a 1210 call to construct your spread technically speaking you you could do that but um, it's very dangerous if you leg in it's called legging in so you add a second leg later so for the purposes of the 25k methodology we always do this uh, spread trade together so both positions are executed at the same time and also close at the same time <clears throat> and most uh, brokerage platforms I'm aware of they'll let you do a spread uh, trade together I don't think I'm aware of any brokerage platform uh, which makes you buy a call first and then sell a call later So now let's compare the bull call spread um, to just buying a call because you know when option newbies uh, start out their option trading journey they they'll see a stock which which has fallen and they think it's a great time to buy in instead of a stock they'll just buy a call and then that's how they lose their money but anyway let's get we'll get into that later why they lose their money when they buy calls but let's just do the comparison that we are talking about so first of all, uh, buying a call option is much more costlier than buying a spread. So here's an example. Here again, I'm going back to the spread which I mentioned in the previous screen. So I'm buying a call debit spread or a bull call spread, same thing. So the stock is BKNG and let's pretend the price is at 1200. So when you buy the spread, you'll be buying a BKNG call, 1200 call, and then you'll be selling a BKNG 1210 call. And the cool thing about spreads is, think of it this way. So you are selling a 1210 call, and when you sell it, you make some money by selling it. So now you're using that money to finance your the 1200 call that you're buying. So it's almost like somebody else is giving you money to finance the call that you're going to buy. But when you're just buying a naked call, just 1200 call, you need to put up all that money from your account. So, and then uh, I, I have mentioned it many times, if you're buying an add the money call, uh, add the money call spread in this case, so the price is at 1200, 
if you're buying that 1200 call and you're selling a 1210 call that's at the money call spread so a rule of thumb is approximately at the money call spreads will cost you half of the width of the strikes so in this case uh, what's the width of the strikes so the 1210 call minus the 1200 call that's a $10 wide spread right so $10 wide spread means it will cost you $5 which is $500 because of the option multiplier so th that's really easy way to calculate how much spreads will cost you now let's compare that to buying a regular call so same example stock is BKNG current price 1200 if you want to buy an add the money call which is 1200 call it will cost you approximately fifteen thousand dollars now j just compare that i mean that's a huge difference and especially if you are um, participating in the 25k challenge we are all starting with 2500 dollars so we don't even have that money so we can buy calls so you have to buy spreads so again that's the beauty of spreads uh many people ask me like how can we start uh, trading options with a really small account well this is the way to do it you start with debit spreads and you can control am the amount of money you're spending for example let's say you don't want to spend or risk $500 in a trade instead of buying a 1200 1210 call you can buy a 1200 1205 call and if you remember the math uh, the five dollar wide spread will cost you 2.5 which is 250 dollars so you can choose and uh, if you if you go to um, for example if you go to spy which is the s&p 500 um, uh, etf so if you buy a spy option in spy the options are one dollar wide so it's amazing you can buy let's say spy is trading at 200 you can buy a 200 call and sell a 201 call and that will literally cost you 50 cents meaning 50 dollars so you can you can do options trading with just 100 dollars in your account but if you start buying naked calls and puts you need a lot of money up front so just keep that in mind so the second point is when you buy a spread the call that you're selling helps you finance the call you're buying which i just mentioned which reduces your initial outlay and it also reduces your risk so and again this works great for our uh, small accounts especially the ones that we use for our 25k challenge now there is a if you want to call a downside the, the uh, a disadvantage of buying a spread versus the call that the theoretical profit potential again uh, just pay attention to theoretical theoretical profit potential of a spread is limited as opposed to buying a call option so let's compare that this is probably my favorite slide uh, so this is how a long call the profit and loss chart of a long call option looks like so you notice that let's say in this in this case you paid $200 to buy a call option this is a hypothetical example so usually calls are not that cheap unless you're buying way out of the money so let's say you spend $200 to buy a call option now if the trade goes against you how much do you think you will lose 200 right your loss is limited so whatever price you paid to buy the call is what you can lose you can't lose any more than that but if you look at this graph the arrow the profit arrow keeps going up straight so again theoretically any stock can go to the moon there's no limit let's say apple is trading at 200 it could go to 200000 i mean there is no rule that it can go to 200000 so potentially your profit is unlimited but what people don't pay attention to attention to is potentially unlimited profit versus what what are the odds of that really happening in real life and let me go back to a, a real life example which i i love using this example 
uh, it's the same example when you buy a lottery ticket. So when you buy the lottery ticket, you're spending a dollar, right? You buy a dollar and it says they're in big, uh, big font. If you win this lottery, you will make $300 million. So, you know, people are like, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll spend $1. I'll take that risk. And then if I win, I make $300 million. But what are the odds of you winning that lottery? You must have read, you know, all these statistics on the internet that you are 100 times more likely to die from a lightning strike than winning the lottery. So those statistics are real. So the the theoretical profit graph never translates to real life profits. So I just want you to keep that in mind when you're buying long calls or puts. Now let's compare to the, the bull call spread. So in this case, let's say the same example, you paid $200 to buy a bull call spread. So now notice that although your loss is, loss is the same as the long call because the price that you pay is the maximum that you can lose. But if you notice the profits, as the stock price starts going up, the profit starts going up initially, but the moment it touches your short strike, so if you bought a 1200, 1210 BKNG bull call spread, the moment the stock touches 1210, which is a short call, your prof profitability is capped off. So from 1210, it can go to 12 million, the stock, and you'll still make that limited amount of money. So that this initially turns off some uh, some traders, especially the you know people who are starting out with options because they just can't grasp this concept that why would I want to limit my profit? But if you have read my book, all the examples I've given you is every time we put on the add the money uh, bull call spreads or uh, bear put spreads, the we are doubling our money with every single trade. I mean, I'll take that any time. Which, like, you know, if you look at the the finance industry, people, if they if you get 10% returns in the market, that means you are a successful trader, 10 to 15%. Here we are tra doubling our money with every single trade. And when I'm talking about 10 to 15% being good returns, those people are telling you that 10 to 15% in a year are good returns. So this is annualized versus every trade you have the potential of doubling your profit. So that's the beauty of debit spreads. So why are debit spreads better? Again, let's, let's just recap. Why are they better than buying uh, calls or puts? So again, lower initial outlay, meaning lower investment. Lower investment means lower risk. So whatever money you're putting up is the one that you could lose. So at the, if you remember the original example, buying a call option was costing you 15,000, but buying a, the same call spread was costing you 500. So you're risking 15,000 in the first case, you're risking 500 in the second case. Now, this is obviously great for smaller accounts. And you know, uh, trading is not a lot about technique as such. As, and in fact, if you read my book, you must have noticed that my technique is really simple. There's, there is no rocket science in my technique, right? So, but how I've, how was I able to become profitable over the years? And the only way you can do is by controlling your emotions and trading mechanically. Just have a strategy and just keep following that. That's the only way. It's not about the strategy. Strategy could be really simple. Buy a stock when it goes low, sell it when it goes high. Right? That's that's what they tell you how to make money in the stock market. Buy low, sell high. How many people do that? Literally nobody. And that's why people lose money. So uh, going to the next point, uh, let's go back to the original example. So if I buy a debit spread, a 1200, 1210, bull call spread, it cost me 500. Same, same example, if you buy a call, 15,000. When you're starting out and when you don't have control over your emotions and it takes time, it takes years and years. So when you don't have control over your emotions and you're risking that big of an amount, 
it will wreak havoc with your emotions when the when the stock goes up and down even by one dollar if you're putting up fifteen thousand and you lose one thousand in a day you will start freaking out and you will make mistakes because of that whereas with a debit spread you can do a debit spread for fifty dollars and if, you know if you are i'm assuming if you are into trading i'm sure you have more than fifty dollars in your account so that's not going to play any uh, you know play any games with your emotions so again so uh, just just wanted to make sure that i throw this out there because this is really important why debit spreads are so good so now another as if there are not enough cool things about debit spreads here's another cool thing irrespective of the expiration date or the stock price spreads cost the same and guys this is this is huge and i'll show you an example real quick but the next point is spreads let you participate in higher price equities so let's pull up this example and just talk about what these two points mean so let's say let's say you are a newbie trader right have you noticed on newbie platforms like robinhood you will you will see that people are always trying to trade penny stocks have you ever noticed that and why do they do that the reason for that is that they cannot participate or they don't have enough money to participate in higher priced equities you know the the equities like the apples the price lines the googles netflix these are solid blue chip companies these are companies which have been here for a long time and will be here for a long time and these are the companies you should be trading not penny stocks but the reason why the new uh, the new uh, stock trader options trader are trading penny stocks is they they are starting out with 100 dollars in their account and they think that if they buy a penny stock for 10 cents and it goes 100 times they'll make a lot of money also the reason that they are not buying the, the high price stocks is because they don't have that money so think about it this way if you were to buy a 1200 dollar share right if you if you want to participate in bkng one share costs you 1200 dollars now if you have a hundred dollars in your account there is no way you can buy that share it's not even possible the second thing is okay let's forget about share can you buy an option? Can you buy a call option in BKNG? One call option costs fifteen thousand dollars. If you have hundred dollars in your account, you can't do that either. So, because of these factors, the the small guy, the guy, the retail trader who's starting out, is unable to participate in the stocks that they should be participating from day one. Uh, th these are the companies like Netflix, the Google, uh, Apple. These are the companies. Th these are the pillars of the of our economy. So, the key is that how do we participate in these high priced equities? And the answer to that is by using debit spreads. Now let's go back to the second point that we are discussing. Irrespective of the expiration or the stock price, spreads cost the same. So I'm going to pull up this another example of AMD. So AMD is trading at $45 right now. And BKNG is trading at $1,200. Now, if you are a newbie trader and you have $100 in your account, maybe you can afford uh, two stocks of AMD, but you can't afford BKNG, right? Or Apple or Google. But if you do a debit spread, notice what's happening here. If I buy an AMD 45-55 call spread, it costs me $500. Why? Because if you remember the, the cheat trick I gave you, to calculate the cost of a debit spread, just subtract, find the width of your spread. In this case, 55 minus 45 is $10. So it will cost you $5, i.e. $500. So if you go back to BKNG, if you buy a 1200-1210 call spread, it also costs you $500. So irrespective of the price of the equity, the equity could be trading less than 
or it could be go trading at uh, $50,000. It doesn't matter. The debit spread costs exactly the same. What this does is, is it allows you to participate in the broader market trading blue chip companies, the well-established companies which you should be doing in the first place. The second cool thing about debit spreads is, uh, let's compare that to buying a, a naked call. So if you were to buy a 1200 call option, it'll, mo it'll cost you $15,000, right? But uh, this, is, uh, this is March, right? So let's say you were buying, the example I'm giving, giving you of the $15,000 is, this is March, if you buy April, 1200 call option that'll cost you $15,000. Now let's say you think the market is being affected by the coronavirus and you you wanted to give some time. So you think that BKNG is really cheap, but you're not sure if in next one month it will recover. So let's say you say, instead of April 1200 call, I want to buy a September 1200 call. Now I haven't checked the price, but every month you add, the more time you add to your call option, the more expensive it gets. So most likely the September call will cost you like, it could go up to anywhere to like $40,000 or $50,000. So the more time you add or the more time you give yourself to be right, the more price you have to pay for it when you're buying a call. Now the beauty of debit spreads is whether you buy April, May, June, July, it doesn't matter. You can pick a month and the spread will cost you exactly the same. So the 1200-1210 call spread will still cost you $500 even if you buy a September spread. So the beauty of this is that let's say right now the market is beaten down. We are, we are in a 30% pullback and you want to capitalize on this but you want to give it five months but you want to spend only $500 for it. You can still do that. So you can, you can buy as much time as you want and the spread doesn't cost any more than what it costs today. So the final point is there is no exposure to the option demons. I made up this word option demons because you know when the, the people who are starting out with options, the option buyers, they if they have two, three hundred dollars in their account, they'll just jump into the market and start buying call options. You know, the buy the dip gang, I call them. So what they'll do is they'll just buy a call option if they see a, a stock dropped in price. But then when even when the stock picks up, it goes reverse the direction and heads in their way. They'll see that they still lost money, but they have no idea what happened to them. The reason is they're not paying attention to the the critical um, components that option is made of, theta or time decay, implied volatility, and delta. So if you are buying calls and puts, if you're doing options trading, I highly recommend that you find a book and read about option Greeks. So if you are not aware of option Greeks, you are going to lose your money. So when you're buying a naked call or put, you, you are exposed to the theta, to the IV and the delta of the option. But when you're doing spreads, the, all these gets canceled out. So um, the short option that you're selling and the option you're buying, they cancel each other out. So the time decay is being canceled out. The implied volatility is canceled out. So it kind of shields you from these uh, all these things that uh, you need to be aware, aware of when you're just trading calls and puts. And the final point is, uh, so I have one more point here called fixed profit. So if you remember the profit and loss chart in the first slide, I was sh showing that as a disadvantage, a theoretical disadvantage that a spread is limited or capped in its profit potential. But in my opinion, that's actually a benefit. It's not a disadvantage. Why is that a benefit? Here is the reason why. Uh, how many of you, uh, whether you are buying calls or when you are buying stocks, 
have been in this situation where you bought a stock or call and it went in your direction and you were making money but you were never sure when to when should you sell like should I, if i sell now is it too early or even if you sold it and the stock went keep uh, kept going up then you have regrets so three days later you're like oh my god i should have held on to that option and made more money so three you start having this you know this uh, concept of the fear of missing out or the fomo so, so you will have those emotions going in your mind that i sold this too early should I, or if you're holding on to it, you'll be like, should I sell it now or should I wait one more week? And if you wait one more week, then the stock starts going down and you start losing your money. So now you're like, you know what, I made, two days ago I made $10,000, now I'm making only 7000 Maybe I'll wait and wait for the stock to go back up. Guess what, the stock never goes back up and basically you give up all the gains that you made. And you could even end up in a losing situation. So those things happen when your emotions are out of control because you never know when is the right time to close your trade. Now with spreads, there is no concept of you deciding when to close your trade because once, since your profit is capped, once the stock goes above your short strike, you can't make any more money anyway. So it's very clear at what point you should close your debit spread. So in, in my opinion, that really helps you, uh, especially as a new trader. And finally, let's talk about the, the profitability of a bull call spread as compared to a call option. So if you remember, this is the profitability chart I was talking about originally. So the losses are capped at the bottom, but the profit is also capped. Now, one thing that uh, trips a lot of new option traders about about uh, vertical spreads in general is, uh, I'll give you an example. So, our original example of uh, BKNG 1200-1210 bull call spread, right? So, in that example, you are buying a 1200 call and you're selling a 1210 call. Now, the goal of this the trade is that the stock should go from, the stock is currently at 1200, so it should start going towards 1210 and either expire at 1210 or go above 1210. That's when you make the, the maximum profit potential of your trade. So what confuses people a lot of times is, let's say today I'm buying that call the call spread, the 1210, 12, uh, 1200, 1210 call spread, and it expires in, April so I have 30 days for expiration but tomorrow so I buy the call spread today the stock was at 1200 tomorrow morning when I wake up the stock is at 1215 so the question is will my spread be 100% profitable tomorrow morning so would I have doubled my money tomorrow morning just because the stock price went above 1210 the answer, unfortunately, is no. So when you buy a, a regular call option, every time the the price of the stock is going above, up dollar by dollar, you are making money on that call instantly. But with spreads, it's slightly different. Spreads do not react to price movement unless the expiration date is near. The call that you bought and the call that you sold are in a way canceling each other's movement. And as the expiration uh, date comes near, the spreads become more sensitive towards the price movement. So if you observe a trade over a month, you will notice that in our BKNG example, let's say the stock actually went against you. So... In, uh, stock was at 1200 and you bought 1200, 1210 call spread and tomorrow morning when you wake up, the stock fell down by $100. So it went to 1100 What you will notice is that you wouldn't have lost a lot of money on your spread because you still have 30 days to expiration and the spread doesn't react to the stock price that fast when the expiration is far away. So in a way, this is a benefit 
whereas if you had bought a fifteen thousand uh, dollar, you have, you had spent fifteen thousand dollars to buy that call option, and you woke up tomorrow morning, and the stock had dropped hundred dollars, you would be looking at like a ten thousand dollar loss in one day, which again going back to my original point, will play against your emotions, and and force you to make wrong decisions, but with spreads, when the expiration is farther away whether it goes down or it goes up the 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 spreads price is not affected that much um, so the same example it went down by hundred dollars you will yes you will see some losses so you bought the spread for 500 yeah you may see 200 dollar loss maybe or maybe hundred dollar loss but not the whole thing not a ten thousand dollar loss but again, if it goes up, so from 1200 it went up to 1300 So it went up $100. Yes, you will see like a maybe a $260 profit. But you will not be able to close the trade for 100% gains. For that, you need to be patient and wait. Again, so we not, uh, I'm not trying to teach you any get-rich-quick uh, scheme here. Patience is a virtue. You need to develop that. And, you know, patience, developing patience and having control of your emotions, they go together. So, so yeah, that answers your question because a lot of people have asked me this question, like, when can I close my trade? So, from my, exam, uh, from, uh, my experience, typically what I've noticed is when the expiration is maybe 10 to 14 days near. During that period is when your spread will start showing almost 100% profits. So that's one thing. The, another example is, let's say you bought BKNG at 1200 right now, right? Now, if you just look at the charts, because we have, we're experiencing this huge pullback in the stock market. If you just look at BKNG's chart, maybe one month ago, it was at $1,800. So we have dropped $600 in a month. So if there is some good news, they find a coronavirus vaccine and from 1200 BKNG goes up to 1400 in a matter of a week. And then you will see 100% profits in just a week. So you don't always have to wait for expiration to come near. If the stock price goes above, way above, where it is right now or way below then yes you will see losses and pro and profits mount up almost instantly so it happens to me a lot that you know i sometimes i can close my trades for 100 percent profit in just a week it has happened to me many many times and in fact if you if you go back to my 10th options challenge 25k options challenge there are some trades out there which have reacted like that. In one week, I was able to close them. So anyway, so I hope that um, that gives you a really good idea of what debit spreads are generally and why I think they are superior over any other, um, whether you're buying stocks or options or naked calls, iron condors. I think they are really good when you're starting with a small account. Thank you.